part, sir. What do you think? Well, thank you very much. And again, this is our second stop, and this is uh, incredible. We're in Malibu, and a certain section of Malibu that was lovely. You don't get much better than this, and uh, you see the devastation. Uh, I guess the total, you said, of, what would you say, over 100,000? Just under over 100,000 100, acres. Which is a tremendous amount of land. You know, 100,000 acres, people can't envision what that is. It's a tremendous piece of land, and uh, it's devastating to see it. I have to say the government officials have done an incredible job. Uh, when you look at this devastation, and I guess at this moment there are, in this area, there are three deaths so far. Three deaths. Yes. It's pretty incredible. It's horrible, but it's also pretty incredible. The job they've done, they evacuated very early, and they took a lot of heat, and they made the right decision. So I congratulate you on that, because that's a lot of political pressure on, on not having to do it, because nobody thinks this is going to happen. They're all unhappy, but now they're very happy that they left. So there's a great decision. Law enforcement, again, first responders. The military really helped a lot in both sites that we visited today. And, of course, FEMA and Brock. I think Brock's done a great job. Done a great job. So yeah. maybe I'd ask you to say a few words, Brock. Brock yeah. Long of FEMA. Absolutely. Thank you, Mr. President. So uh, we're, we're here uh, not only down in Southern California, but also up in Paradise. And it's our job at FEMA to coordinate the firepower of the federal government down through uh, the governor here to ultimately uh, help the firefighters uh, at the local level and police and emergency managers overcome this disaster. And so the assistance that we provide is uh, not only going to be able to assist with the debris removal, but more importantly, taking care of people and, uh, you know, mass care to also fire mitigation. So as you can see, as uh, the wildfires go through an area like this, the land is scorched and, you know, a little bit of rain is nice, but too much rain could be a problem too. So we're already trying to think ahead and work with our partners to uh, try to mitigate what we can of, of uh, the, the additional impacts coming. So. The uh, towns and every place we visited, I, I see, and I've asked the question, they're all going to do an expedited rebuild meaning the permits are going to come a lot faster than would normally be the case. Actually, this is an area where it's pretty tough to get permits, and I know they're going to go very fast with expediting and get it re rebuilt and redone. And uh, that's a great thing. It'll make things happen a lot faster. Jerry, would you like to say something? Yeah. As a matter of fact, I signed an executive order to cut red tape and speed up uh, the permit processes as well as other uh, recovery actions. So that'll help. And uh, all I can say is that uh, we are going to have to uh, learn a lot more about nature, about the wind, about the fire potential, about uh, how to build, how not to build, how to escape, uh, what measures of, of uh, protection we can build in. And uh, it's not going to be cheap, uh, but I think we have to carefully really look into uh, the facts here and, and take all that we learn and apply it going forward. And of course, I won't have to do that. Mr. Newsom will do that. So. <laughs> Thanks for the baton. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, it's just, you know, the Mendocino fire, the Tubbs fire, the Thomas fire. I mean, you just go down this list. Uh, and, you know, this is unacceptable. We're a point, past the point. People have had enough of this, and we got to deal with this head on. I mean, governor's done an amazing job with the legislature the last couple of years. Uh, we've invested a record amount of money into our efforts, uh, but we have to do more, and uh, this clearly – underscores that. But I also want to underscore uh, a more fundamental point, and that is the collaboration and cooperation we're getting from the federal government, and we're very grateful for that. Uh, there's no politics being played here. Uh, the President signed that emergency declaration immediately, uh, and I cannot impress upon all the folks here how grateful I am for the conversations we've had, private, not just public, over the course of the last few hours, and in terms of the expectation going forward that the federal government's not just going to be here today with all of you but tomorrow and over the course of the next few years as we rebuild. We'll get it going. I would just say, on behalf of CAL FIRE and the State Fire Department, uh, throughout California, we still remain in critical fire weather, so as this fire and the fires up north continue uh, to gain containment, the challenge isn't over. And through cooperation of uh, agencies throughout California, uh, but we are successful, so thank you. Chief? All right, well, Daryl Wasby, Fire Chief, Los Angeles County Fire Department. On behalf of the County of Los Angeles, just really want to thank the governor and the president here for their presence to get the state and, and federal resources here and support 
as it relates to combating this fire, and all the, also the resources to rebuild our community. But I also just want to thank uh, you know my part, counterpart here from Cal, Cal Fire, and our law enforcement partners not here, but we had all hands on deck as it relates to trying to protect this community, and we were successful in getting up tens of thousands of people out, and um, and unfortunately we lost property, but we saved a lot too. If you can imagine hurricane type force winds coming to this community that we had firefighters and sheriffs protecting the citizens here. But in conclusion, just once again, Mr. President, Governor, thank you for your support. And we're looking forward to rebuilding our communities and then also looking forward from the local, state, and federal level to really talk about these challenges and what we can do to mitigate and prevent these things from occurring in the future. Thank you, Chief. Fellas? Rick Mullen, Mayor of the City of Malibu, Mr. President, thank you very much for coming down here and showing your concern and also thank you for all the support you've given us. Governor and Governor-elect also appreciate everything you've done. Malibu took it on the chin here, but compared to the fire up north, we didn't lose as many lives. So if there's a silver lining here, it's that we saved a lot of lives and then we paid for it in frustration for people who are outside who got the mandatory evacuation order. So thank you for all your patience. We're going to get you back in as quickly as possible. And for everybody who's suffered a loss here of all their personal belongings and their precious memories, we're going to do everything that we can with the assistance of these fine gentlemen to get it back together. And we will leave no stone unturned to come together, and Malibu will be strong again. So thank you very much. For thank you very much. I appreciate it. And uh, Mr. President, I appreciate Peter Foy, Ventura County Supervisor. <laughs> I just appreciate everything you've done. I appreciate our, our fire and both from L.A. County and Ventura County coming together to save lives, like you said. I mean, it was amazing being part of this stuff. We've seen a lot of tragedy of Ventura County with the shooting, the whole bit, and I just, it's been amazing. But we will rebuild, we will get through this, and I do appreciate, Mr. President, your, your prayers, your wife's prayers, and, and all to, and the whole country's prayers for, for this community. We're strong here in California, and I appreciate the governor and, and Governor Leck being here to show that support, and we are going to get through this. But it's going to be tough, and I, I do appreciate everything that's happened here in Malibu, too. And, the rest of it. So thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you, Peter. Oh, you've done such a great job. And uh, you mentioned the shootings, and we're now going over to see some of the families of the victims and the first responders and the police and the law enforcement generally. The job they've done is really incredible, brave. And the first one in that door, right? The first one in that door. Yeah. Took and I appreciate both these governor governor elect being at that memorial. Yeah. That happened. That's so true. I appreciate you being on. It's a beautiful uh, memorial. You. Yeah. But uh, so we're going to go over and see them, and maybe you're going to be joining us. But we really appreciate it. Great job. Well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Here too. And thank you all. Thank you, thank sir, you. Mr. President. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Mr. President, actually seeing this with your own eyes, how does that change your perception? Has it changed your perception? Well, I think it's just a horrible thing, and it's been going on for a long time. And I think we're going to come up with some plans and uh, methods and mitigation. We're going to. Uh, have some great success. It's something we can work on and do much better. Uh, I really believe, I'm, I'm a strong believer, a lot of cities are in forests. If you look at Europe and other places, uh, we have a lot of forest states where they're mostly forests and they just don't have this problem. Uh, California's a very unique place and it's got some very unique leadership and some great leadership and we're going to be uh, working with the leadership, working with Gavin now for the most part and I think uh, we're going to come to some pretty good conclusions and and maybe, more importantly, some real solutions to a problem that is a very, very big problem. Because every year, especially at a certain time of the year, you just turn on and it's automatic that you have these massive fires. I mean, these are massive fires. Now, in this case, when you look at where we just left, you're talking about tremendous numbers of death. And here we had three, I guess, at a minimum. That's too much. So we're going to work on a lot of... Uh, means of mitigation and uh, solving a problem that's been a big problem for decades, long before Jerry, long before Gavin, long before all of us. I mean, this has been going on too long, and I think we can come up with some really great solutions. Any other questions? Thank you. Uh, actually, talk, actually, you often talk about the fact that politics is a mean business sometimes. Yeah, it can um, be, and, but it's and very nice when we, know we all that, get together. Yeah, I mean, and now you're having an opportunity to have some yeah. face time with people that you sometimes criticize publicly. Do you feel like your relationship with them and potentially with the state of California might change because of that? Well, I think we've developed a very good relationship. I've known Jerry for a long time, but I think we got closer today than we could ever get over the last 20 years. And Gavin, I've just met and I've heard terrific things, and I think we've developed a, a great relationship. We have to work together. 
is a very big problem, and we have to solve this problem. And I know that we're going to work together. I have no doubt. Come here. I have no doubt. <laughs> we're going to get it done. We yeah. have really an obligation. Absolutely. I think we have an obligation. Absolutely. We don't. We don't really have a choice. We have to get it done. Yep. And we're going to be working together very closely. Yeah. A lot of people yeah. agree with what you said about uh, about land management. But yeah. now, uh, another big question is, is it possible that climate change is a real issue here? And well, that there we'll needs be looking to be at everything. I mean, it, it is land management and it's forest management, really, is what you mean. Uh, but we're going to be looking at every factor. And we're going to get to the bottom of it. And I think we can do it fairly quickly. I really do. We'll take the areas that are most exposed to the problem and we'll work on that first. And you know what they are. You probably know what they are right yeah, now. Exactly. But here's an example. You know what it is. Yeah, on a regular basis. But, uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna come up with some really good solutions. Jennifer, did you have something? Yeah, Mr. President, when you said on Air Force One that you feel like you have more similarities with Governor Brown on time, um, as we realized, did you mean on climate change or did you just? Well, mean I think we general? have similarities in many ways, and and you know one real similarity is we both want to come to the right conclusion, and I know I get there, and I know he gets there, and the right conclusion here is to get these forest fires to stop, because I really think there's a way of doing that, and. We don't want to turn on every year. A certain time you turn on, and it's almost expected. And you're watching from New York, or you're watching from Washington D.C., and you don't, you don't really see the gravity of it. I mean, as as big as they look on the tube, you don't see what's going on until you come here. And what we saw, at pleasure, what a name right now. But we're, what we just saw, we just left pleasure paradise. for paradise. And what we just saw at, at Paradise is just, uh, you know, it's just not acceptable. But and do you, you just, think you have similarities you just, with Governor Brown on, on climate change? Well, I, I, let me answer that. Yeah, please. <laughs> <laughs> no, what I want to say is the shock of all this is going to uh, heighten our focus and attention and also our cooperation. The President said we're going to get to the bottom of it. There's a short-term response, mid-term, and a longer-term response. And I think we're all going to pull together to do whatever we need, and we don't get it all agreed to or solved in a week or a month or even a year or two. But over time, I think we're going to get, uh, we're going to understand better uh, what we're up against. So I would just say, Mr. President, uh, California for 10,000 years never had more than 300,000 people. Now we've got 40 million. So uh, you got to learn to live with nature in a very uh, creative and sophisticated way. And I think that's going to be the challenge. I think we'll meet it. At least <laughs> Newsom will meet it because I'm going to be watching from the ranch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is it going to require some new funding measures that you will see from Congress? So we're putting in a farm bill $500 million. And when you look at that, and you know, when you look at the combination of the two between Malibu and other places, I mean, not just the two, it's other places, uh, it sounds like a lot of money. It's not that much money. The state will contribute. We're all going to contribute. We're going to get it taken care of. I mean, we saw a site, and don't forget, there are hundreds of people that still are unaccounted for and uh, that's a tough that's a tough situation now hopefully they're with their relatives and there won't be a problem but certainly there will be some that uh, are just going to be not accounted for so we're going to spend the money that it's necessary uh, is a, a great great people that live here and it's unfair to put them through this so often and Gavin knows that and Jerry knows that we all know that all of these folks know it and they've done a fantastic job they really have I mean you have done, from the law enforcement standpoint, fire and fire prevention standpoint, what you've done is incredible. And they really held it back. This could have been far worse. And I don't know if you know, but they're still putting out this fire, this fire in another section. How is that going, by the way? It's 82 percent contained tree forest. Yeah, we still have some uh, hot spots and some con canyons that we're concerned about, but we think by November 19th we'll have full containment. So in Paradise, they have a section that's going absolutely wild right now with additional fire. And just by looking, Jerry, at the map, that's a very vibrant forest that it's it right sure next is. to. Mm -hmm. And they have to, you know, they're out there fighting. As we're, as we're talking here, they're throwing water. They're doing everything you can do. There are tremendous numbers of very brave people. And if those winds change, you know what can happen. Those people are in big trouble. So uh, you take a look at what's going on there, and you take a look at this. 
Because right now, as we're speaking, that's happening. And are you going to be successful in — if you have winds coming? Uh, how, how long will it take to put out the rest of the fire? We're pretty confident right now. We still have offshore winds, but they've really died down significantly. Yeah, this is, this is and you can see now that we have a marine influence, our firefighters are getting yeah. some moisture into in this weather. So um, we still have several thousand firefighters out there. So we're confident that we'll have full containment by November the 19th. And then as we stand here, we're starting to repopulate the entire breadth of this incident. And then with the County of Los Angeles and surrounding cities, we're trying to start the rehabilitation and help people get their lives back together. So it's, that's going to take several years working with the, our local officials, the county, the state, and the federal government. But once again, we appreciate your support. Well, we're sending a lot of extra people to Paradise. They're going, I mean, literally as we speak, we have massive numbers of people going up there. We have large numbers of people coming here. You have it seem to have it very much under control. Right now, the wind has stopped, and I assume that's a very good thing, but the wind has stopped. Uh, but one of the problems you had, especially in Paradise, the problem you had was the wind. The wind was, I mean, they say 70 or 80 miles an hour. That's, uh, that's pretty tough. Okay, any other questions? What do you say to the... You spoke earlier today with your CIA director. Yes, Haspel, I did. Uh, in the wake of these reports that the CIA has assessed that MBS, the crown prince, is behind uh, this assassination of Jamal Khashoggi. Uh, what do you believe after speaking uh, with your CIA director? And do you still well, yeah, trust I did. the Saudi I spoke with our, our CIA director, who's terrific and very knowledgeable and been studying this very closely. And it's a horrible thing that took place, uh, the killing of a journalist, a very, very bad situation, Khashoggi. And somebody who's respected, it should never have happened. And we'll be having a very full report over the next two days, probably Monday or Tuesday. Did We're the CIA have a very assess report. that MBS was behind it? Uh, they haven't assessed anything yet. It's too early. It was a very premature report, but uh, that's possible. We're going to see. But we're going to have a report on Tuesday, and it'll be very complete. In the meantime, we're doing things to some people that we know for a fact were involved, and uh, we're being very tough on a lot of people. What, what's this report on Tuesday? That, that you we're going to come up with a report as to what we think the overall impact was and who caused it and who did it. We're talking about a killing. We're not talking about anything else. We're talking about a killing. So who did it? What do you, you say, what do you say to the shooting victims, Mr. That? President? What do you say to the shooting well, victims who have, right now, now. who have we're lost everything? And, and is there, does this make you think maybe there needs to be some changes when it comes to guns or things that could be done? What could be done to prevent well, I'll tell you this? what. We'll be talking to you in a little while, but we're going to see the families right now. And... Uh, I hear they've been incredible. The families, the way they've handled it, it's been, that was a horrible, horrible event in a great area, an area that's one of the most the safest places, America, yeah. right? I, I was reading, it's like the safest place in America, yeah. and it happened there. So we're going to see those families right now, and we'll see you back over at the airport, okay? okay. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, John Sibber is your name? Sibber? No, Rick Mullen. Rick Mullen. You're the mayor of Malibu? Thank you, sir.